Welcome back to the channel. I am Lady Nika, and with this week's episode of Shit Talking Saturday, uh, it's no different than Fuck Shit Friday. All the difference is this child is comes one day later when it's not a Fuck Shit Friday. We do the same thing. We talk a little shit while we swallow some spit. And that's what I'm here for, honey. That is what I'm here for to, to do today with you all. I don't know how long this video going to be. I'm going to try not to make it long. But if it does get long, I will cut it and make it a part two. Okay, so you may get two shit-talking Saturdays today if this goes too long. Before I begin into the topics at hand, I want to send out an apology to each and every one of y'all watching me right now, my love things. Yesterday, my energy level on growing up hip hop Atlanta was completely off. Um I'm surprised as many people that have watched it has watched it because I was not myself yesterday. I went through something yesterday that kind of threw me for a loop and I just knew I had to get that video out so I did and I tried to push through but I'm human, you know, and so I felt I didn't feel it yesterday. Yesterday I after cashing my damn paycheck, going to Walmart to pick up my medicine and other supplies, um, I guess the few seconds I walked away from my, you know, my purse, because it was open, my wallet was sitting in there, I walked away from my purse two seconds just to ask a question to the pharmacist about a prescription that I was refilling, and the side effects that I, I, I have experienced from it. Child, I, by the time I made it back to my purse, and like I tell y'all, it's every bit of two minutes, two seconds I was gone away from that purse. Because, you know, you, have, you can't bring the boogie right there. You have to sit your boogie there and talk to the uh, pharmacist through the window. So I was doing that, and I got back. I, I continued on my shopping spree. I mean, my shopping journey, and my phone rang. When my phone rang, it was my daughter. But I'm noticing when I reach in my purse, I don't see my wallet. So I'm on the phone with her and looking through my purse. And that's when I made the revelation that my fucking wallet was gone. So now I have no social security card. I have no driver's license. I have no ID. I don't have my work badge. I don't have none of that because all that was in my wallet, including my entire paycheck. And I was feeling like... You know, why would God let something like that happen to me? But then I had to realize why wouldn't he? God don't make God don't make bad things happen, but we know bad things happen to good people sometimes. And I feel like of all people, why should I be suffering through something like that? But hey, it is what it is. And then what topped it all off, I shared that with, you know, a few people. Not looking for help, but just I needed to vent yesterday. I needed to just go the fuck off because that's what I was feeling in that moment. And I had two of them say, you know what, I ain't going to let you go through this. I'm, I'm able to help you, so I'm going to do this for you and I'm going to do that. Needless to say, 12 o'clock hit last night and none of that shit had came to fruition. I ain't mad at them, baby. Everybody ain't ain't about what they be talking about. And sometimes unexpected things arise for people and they're not able to do what they say they're going to do. But I just felt like the common courtesy thing would have been to give me a call and tell me. Don't say you're going to do something, have me prepare for it, and then you don't show up. I don't do stuff like that. Oftentimes, I find myself overextending myself a lot of time for other people. Y'all, I have literally given the shoes off my feet to a homeless person, had to jump in my car and go home and get another pair. So for something like that to happen to me, it hurt me. Um, I was scared because I hadn't gotten all my medicines. So, you know, I was like, Lord, in two days, I'm going to start feeling sick as hell. So if y'all don't see me much next week, that may be what part of the problem is. I wasn't able to get the medicine. I'm not looking for nobody to save me. I just believe now that if God bring me to it, he going to see me through it. I'll be all right. Yes, yeah, some it, it hurts. It ain't going to lie to y'all. That shit hurt like a motherfucker yesterday. Oh, I was all up through here. It was tight. I thought I was about to have another heart attack, bitch. I'm like, shit, bitch, you got five stints. How many they can give you? Calm it down. I mean, I was just on... I was on 20 all day yesterday because I couldn't believe something like that happened to me, you know. And then to have people that I trust say they got my back and they don't have my back. That, that, all that just ate me up. But we're in a better place today. I realized that not everybody is going to be like me. A person or they worried. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to try my best to do it. And if I don't get it done, I'm going to let you know. But I ain't going to worry about the shit. 
I'll see my, I mean, God will see me through it. But if y'all do, like, all of a sudden I don't say nothing, and I know we got reunions and shit coming up, if I'm not here, that's probably why I'm starting to feel bad. And I got to at least keep myself going enough to make the next week paycheck. So, y'all just hold me in y'all prayers. That's all I ask. But, again, I'm sorry about the review for yesterday and how... I ran through it and didn't really give a shit. I really did. Because at that point, I was done with everything. Child, I was like, you know, hell, damn, they wish death on myself. I felt so bad. Bitch, when you work that hard, and then that's an overtime check, and you got it sitting there in your little bank envelope, they put your coins in, child. And for that to come up missing, then you took my identification, too. I'm like, Lord have mercy, but... I'm going I'm to make it, y'all. I'm going to make it. Anyway, y'all ain't come here for this challenge. And I, but I just wanted to tell the ones that do be following me on social media and probably wondering, what the fuck is wrong? What happened to Lady Nika? That's what happened to me, honey. I guess it's some, it's a, a, people say it's a minor setback for a major comeback. I don't see how, but okay, I'm going to take the word. All I can do now at this point is just fall on my faith that everything going to work out in my favor. Anyway. Let's get on to the stories at hand, cause I want I'm, I'm gonna try not to make this two videos, cause I don't want y'all to have to watch all this shit. Uh, House Majority Whip Steve Scalise was removed from the regular patients' room and placed back into the ICU wing at MedStar Washington uh, Medical Center. If y'all don't recall, last month on I think June, July, the, June the eighth or the eighteenth. Um, he was shot during practice for a congressional basketball game that's held every year in Alexander, Virginia. Thursday, they performed surgery on him to control an infection. Representative for Mr. Scalise said he tolerated the surgery well and remains in serious condition. So, my prayers are for a speedy recovery for Steve Scalise, okay? Now, let's move on. Tennis great Venus Williams was involved in an accident last month resulting in the death of one of the passengers of the vehicle that was involved in the crash. However, new evidence suggests that we, uh, Venus, Venus Williams lawfully entered the Florida intersection seconds before the fatal crash. Originally, reports had said that Venus failed to make a turn at the intersection called an a gridlock effect, but the new surveillance fo footage that surfaced from a residential community nearby suggests that Venus actually did complete her stop before that car slammed into her. That car was driven by Linda Barron, Bar Barson, yeah. Her husband, Jerome Barson, age 78, died two weeks later from complications from that. Uh, I want to send out my uh, RIPs to Mr. Jerome Barson. Prayers up to the family and to Venus because this got to be hard. That woman had, you know, just to know that someone died because of you and it ain't your fault. You know, this was clearly an accident. I can totally understand the pressure she probably been feeling over the last few weeks. So my prayers off to her, and I hope that this this new evidence does kind of clear clear her name because we all remember how Brandy went through when she had this similar incident uh, years back. So. We're going to pray that everything works all right, and we're going to send our rest in pieces up to Mr. Jerome Barson. Now, let's talk David Desper. That's the man accused of pulling a 40 caliber pistol and firing it to a car driven by Bianca Robertson, uh, resulting in her death. He was arrested after a four-day manhunt that stretched across New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. He had been charged with first child, he got a lot of charges. First degree murder, third degree murder, criminal homicide, recklessly endangering another person, possession of a instrument of an instrument of crime with the intent to use it criminally. Uh, and he is currently being held at the Chester County Prison with no bond. Preliminary hearing is set for July the 13th. Authorities said that this was caused by an act of road rage. Desper and Robinson uh, were both trying to merge into the same lane on Route 10 in Chester County. Uh... I read that it, it can be a congested roadway at certain points of the day. Jesper uh, got agitated that Robinson was trying to merge at the same time he was. Um, so he 
pulled out a gun and he basically shot into her car, shooting her on the right, left side of her face. Robinson was 18 years old. She had just graduated from high school and was slated to head to college in a month or so. So she was headed home this particular day from a shopping spree, okay? She was found shot in the left side of the head when her uh, her car was in a ditch off the side of the road and she was pronounced dead at the scene. Her father, Rodney Robertson, is now coming out saying that it, this sounds more like a hate crime than a road rage that caused her death because she was shot, you know, the way he shot her and how he made sure he got close enough to shoot her is the reason why this man feels like this you know he said he know his daughter to be a very careful and cautious driver she would never be combated behind the wheel she would concede to allow another car to go ahead of her before she would race another car prosecutors in chester county has not said that this incident was racially motivated however an uh, investigation continues so i would like to send out my rest in peace to bianca robertson and prayers up for rodney robertson her father and the rest of her family and friends y'all tell me what y'all think about this story okay now that we didn't got the real heavy shit out the way let's go ahead on and do some up Let, let's go let's let's shift gears into the realm of Celebrity bullshit and gossip, okay? Now, let me tell I got a piece of hell. Okay. Okay. Update to the Rob Kardashian and Black China saga. Since we last spoke, y'all, China has obtained a lawyer, Lisa Bloom. If you don't know who she is, she is the daughter of Gloria Allred, Miss Any Celebrity That's Gotta Cause I'm On It, okay? As counsel, and Ms. Bloom took to her social media to say that she will be in court on Monday to file a restraining order against Kardashian um, amidst the allegations from China that he had beat her up before. Rob also, since our last conversation, has uh, reclaimed all of the jewelry that he bought her and he has cut her off from any form of financial support from him. Child, he did all that after that meltdown he had on social media early this week. We also learned a little bit more about the guy in question that she was cheating with, or at least one of the guys. That would be Ferrari True. Uh, YouTube sensation Star Malone tweeted <laughs> that he is a scammer who is gay for pay. He has a four-month-old pregnant uh, female that he has pregnant that he been keeping secret about. Mother Malone said he has proof of all this guy's shenanigans and he has no issue with a person being bisexual, but he felt that it was nasty for him to be messing with women and men at the same time unprotected. Now, at that point we had nothing to substantiate what old Mother Malone was saying. Until social media, if somebody, y'all be on it, baby, y'all will go back and get a tweet from the day a person made or uh, Instagram account. It could be 2011, child. Y'all gonna find it. Child, they found some uh, tweets uh, that he, that his baby mama, let me see. Tweets from Ferrari first baby mama Bonita surfaced where she said that she had found him liking pics of gay men. Bonita baby mama number one also said, did a recent interview saying that this was all a scheme set up by Todd to come to us with this bullshit. <laughs> Child, this is so comical to me. But in actuality, she said that uh, Ferrari was trying to profit from robbing China. So he went after China for those reasons. Child, I said, what the hell? What the hell? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. We also learned some more interesting facts on Bonita. She is alleged to be a girl about town, meaning that she's a whole, whole, whole. Uh, she's known to mess with men, namely celebrities, and she knew what Ferrari was up to because he told her. And I guess she provided some text messages. But both of these bitches ain't shit, and I don't feel bad for nobody involved in this situation. None of them honestly and I told y'all that in my damn first video I did on that I don't give a shit because Rob should have been Rob should have been smarter 
China shouldn't have been on a quest of revenge toward her baby daddy, who had hooked up with Rob's younger sister. And China shouldn't be so wide, so quick to open up her ass and her legs for people. And if she wasn't like that, then the likelihood that a dude like Ferrari would have been able to infiltrate her car and only add to tearing her reputation down even more, if that's even possible. I don't give a shit, y'all. I really don't give a shit. Now, a new prison letter from Tupac Shakur has made its way to the light. And this one is getting attention because it involves Miss Madonna. The letter, basi the letter basically says he dumped Madonna because she's white. Madonna did admit that she did, in fact, date Tupac in 2015 with an, uh, when she did an interview with Howard Stern. Okay? Um, the slang, she said she dated the slang rapper, but... Uh, we found out through reading these letters that he tells her that he loves her, but being with her is not good for his image. Why might you ask? Because Tupac is a black was a black revolutionary down for the cause. To date her would make people kind of side at him, and you know it would make her look good, but it's gonna kind of tear him down. His community would have began to side at him, and y'all know he would. Okay. He was 22 at the time. She was 36. They dated back in 1994, and now this prison letter has been released. And the last one that was released sold for $170,000. $170, this one probably going to sell for even more because it involves Madonna. Uh, child, tell me what y'all think. You know what I'm saying? Because based on what I seen when I read the letter through TMZ was that he did love her, but because of what was going on at the time and what he stood for, being with her would have been not so good for his image or his career. Y'all get down the pen and let me know what y'all think about that. Now, let's move on to Jocelyn versus Mona Scott Young, the continuing saga. This is so crazy. Now, I updated y'all earlier this week. Uh, about Jocelyn quitting the show after Mona and BH1 allegedly owes her money and she was calling for help from Judge Mathis or any other judge that was willing to listen. Well, now a few days ago, Shekana Joe, Mona Scott, and K. Michelle was all down to K. Michelle's little restaurant, Puff and Petals. Shekana was on, was filming a video. Basically, she was saying for all the people that think my girl, I was talking down on my girl Mona, um, she was saying that Mona's a good person and what she had done for Kay. Now, Kay took to the video and she was saying that Mona met her as a very broken person and that Mona did help her, you know, as she said she would and she would always be indebted to Mona. And yes, they've had their ups and downs, but Mona is like family to her. So she is, you know, she'll always be indebted to Mona for what she did. Now, I didn't see it in shade. If, if, if I was going to say it was in the shade, it was shade from Shekinah. Because she started the damn video saying that all these people that's talking down about my girl Mona. And we all know that the current person that has been had issues with Mona is in fact Jocelyn Hernandez. Okay? Well, Jocelyn seen that shit, baby. And what did she see it for? Okay? Jocelyn wasn't feeling it. So she posted a pic of them at Kay's restaurant together and said they have to gang up on her. I don't know if she said anything more because I ain't give a shit to research it. But child Kay got wind of it and went on clapback session as she always do. She claimed Jocelyn tried to turn her mansion into a crack house. She urged her to give uh, her nose a rest. She said all that cocaine you do and you still manage to find time to stick your nose in my business girl. She said that the girl needed to take the time to comb. She said, you got time to come for me, but you can't comb that pretty little baby hair. What a disgrace. And she had tagged the post, hashtag free bunny. She said some more shit too, which are... She said some more shit, and, and, and Jocelyn replies, where your kid is? <laughs> That's baby when she asked her, where your kid at? She said, look, a mama have her baby. If your mama got your baby all the time, that's not your baby. That's your grandmama baby. <laughs> your child. Then she fixed it and said, that's your mama baby. Baby, when I tell you that accident was in and out, it was in and out making me wonder how 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 deep or how thick is her true accent. I don't know, child. 
But anyway, bottom line, I think that she kind of came at Johnson the sideways, if anybody. I don't feel like Kay giving her testimony, some of which she said things that she done said in the past about Mona was toward Jocelyn in any kind of way. However, you know, if you say something to Kay, she's going to say something back to you. I, I just, ugh. I don't understand. I just feel like this, y'all. If if Jocelyn has severed her ties with Mona, let it be. If she owe you money, girl, take that bitch to court and get your coin. But, you know, all this, this foolishness you airing out on social media is not cool. Let it go because... It's, it's not, you know, it's not necessary. And right now we paying attention because this pipe and hot tea to us. But after a while, the shit will cool off and nobody will care who you are or uh, what you talking about, girl. What you need to do is while you still have somewhat of some re uh, relevancy, go find you a spot somewhere doing something in showbiz if that's what you want to do. Leave Ramona Scott and BH1 alone. You can't beat them, girl. And to continue won't do nothing but hurt you. It's not going to do nothing to them, okay? Hell, even Nene Lee said down to the uh, B103 with Big Tigger that she need to just get her team. First of all, she ain't got a team. Get a team with people that really care about her and start to negotiate if a negotiation is necessary between herself, VH1, and Mona Scott. Stop putting that shit on social media because you don't have the wherewithal to fight no big industry, no big company like this production company, BH1, and you ain't got enough money to really fight Mona. So, girl, what you would want to do is stop before you completely back blackball yourself. That's just my opinion. Y'all get down in the pan and let me know what you think about this situation. Um, Kenya Moore is alleged to be at odds with the Real Housewives of Atlanta producers because they want to have her husband be a part of her storyline for season 10. And he and she... Do not want that. Kenya is saying that her contract does not include her husband. And that's probably because she wasn't married at the time of the contract. Uh, but they want her to showcase. Uh, Real Housewives wants to showcase the cast lives. And her husband is a part of her life. So not sure how she's going to maintain her spot without her husband. But being a part of the show. Or, uh, you know, without her husband being a part. I don't know how she's going to do that without him being a part of the show. I got her, though. If you done been waiting 46 years for a good man to come along and you had it, you probably don't want to bring your husband on national TV because history says that shit don't last long, huh? Y'all know it don't last long. As soon as you put your man on this damn uh, show, it's gonna, your marriage going to be all over with. And I don't understand why you want to do it, girl, because I sure in the hell wouldn't want to bring him on here. But y'all know Portia had this same situation just a couple of uh, months ago when... I mean, a couple of seasons ago, when they wanted, Real Housewives want to be all up in your business. That's really what I feel like it is. And if they can't, they can't use you. So, I don't know. You know, they saying that if her husband don't be a part of the show, there's a chance they might fade her out. I'm like this about it. Girl, if this real and you really want your husband, and now that you're trying to, you know, I heard she's having the little procedures, the little IVFs to try to become impregnated. Girl, if this real for you. You might want to just let Real Housewives go. Now, I don't know, you know, if that's going to affect ratings. Because they had said at one time if Nene Levy was going to affect their ratings. And I don't think it did. If you ask me, I became more interested when Nene was gone. But that's just me, you know. But I, I don't know how she's going to handle that. I hate to see her leave. But if it's if it's hard to save your marriage, I would I run up out that motherfucker. Bye, deuces. Because this show is only going to last so many more seasons. Girl, you got a lifetime left with this man if this the right one for you. So don't, don't, you know, don't, don't cut your nose off to spite your face, bitch. Cause, uh, uh, girl, don't do that. In other Real Housewives of Atlanta news, it's being said that American Next Top Model Eva Marcel is filming with the cast, namely Nene, for season ten. I don't really have no opinions about that. I feel like Eva can, she can handle her own on this show. What y'all think? I think she'll do all right, honey. I don't, I don't have no problem with it. Next thing we're going to talk about is last week, last, not yet this Thursday, Thursday for last, Jay-Z uh, uh, released his album, 444. 
Okay, I done heard little bits and pieces. I told you my son got sprint and he got title. So I heard some of the songs and uh it's all right. I mean now it ain't no club jam, but it's something that I wouldn't mind having a, you know, playing on around the house when I wanna listen to me some little music and just chill out on a sad I listen to it, you know, it's all right. But it appears that quite a few entertainers were upset with Jay Z. Now I took what he was saying in the, in the songs as him just, you know, trying to give you some old head wisdom. We are, Jay-Z is what, 48, 47 years old? He almost 50 years old. He trying to spit some game. Now, it might be, it might be something you should already know, but clearly some of these folks didn't know it, because he dogs do holler. But I just saw it as him trying to give uh, the younger generation a little knowledge about you know, certain things that they doing that they can have long-term effects for them and it ain't necessarily going to be good, okay? First person was Kanye. Now, we know Kanye already had a problem with Tidal because he was saying that, you know, he felt like Jay-Z and them owed him some money for streams he never received. But he also called a man insane in this damn bit in this song. And he got in his feelings. It said that him and Kim are upset about what Jay-Z said. My thing is this, why you give a shit? If it ain't true, why does it bother you? You still gonna be Kanye at the same, I mean, at the same time. Now, if you ask me, Kanye ain't his feeling, uh, because some of that shit hit home. We all know Kanye been in the sunken place ever since. I think he been, he was headed to the sunken place when his mama died. When he got this Kardashian, Told y'all about them Armenian voodoo queens. Told y'all about them Armenian voodoo queens, honey. Mm, mm, mm. Once a Kardashian get a man, he ain't never the same. And if you think I'm not, look at Scott and Lamar and Tigger. Child, get over. You ain't invited to the palace. Dude, don't fuck with you no more. Eric Benet. <laughs> You supposed to feel your current wife is the baddest, but let us not forget you had another bitch that society said was the baddest bitch. Was one of the most beautiful women in the world. And y'all not together now, and we know why. Jay said he almost was you. <laughs> he almost lost the baddest bitch. That's all they did was say, I don't know why they were mad, y'all. I don't know why they was mad. Future. You lost a good woman, and she upgraded on that ass fast. She got a champion football player, bitch, and dated him for a minute. Then he did the respectable thing, which is what you didn't do. He married her and quickly threw an egg up in her. But let us not forget, your son do spend a little bit more time with Russell than he does you. All he's saying is be careful of that shit because your, your, your son will fuck around and be learning how to play football with another man. I didn't see nothing wrong. Look, you can't get mad if somebody telling the truth. We know that you do do you might spend a little time with Lil Future Junior, but you don't spend the time with him you used to. And of course, we know that Sierra and Russell are now married, and the baby is in full custody. I mean, she got full custody, full primary custody, so the baby's always there. So a bond is building with this man. In my opinion, instead of you being mad at Jay-Z for pointing out the obvious, how about you get with Russell and y'all work together collectively to make to raise this child to be an awesome man? How about that? Instead of you getting your feelings because he's telling you the truth. Another motherfucker teaching your son how to play football. Child, sit your ass down. You live. Then he talked about putting them racks up to your ear. I always thought that was crazy. Now, I like the little song by um Class. Uh, you know, put the racks up to the ear. Uh, I like that. But in all actuality, Jay-Z spoke some truth. Instead of putting them racks up to your goddamn ear, how about you do some investments? Some investments that can get, that have appreciation later on in life for you. Because this rap thing is changing. And you may be hot today, and we might not know you five years from now. So while you got this this inflow, I mean, this, this flow of income coming in, how about you starting up different avenues of income from that primary source of income that you've had? It's no reason to be putting them... And you know what the thing about it is? I respected him saying that because if you go back in history, Jay Z used to do the same thing. He used to do the same thing. So he's speaking from a place of experience and a place of knowledge. He knows exactly what he's saying. That money, 
Y'all might not have the success he had at 47 years old, able to put a rap song, a whole album out, and it go platinum in five days. You might not have that as rappers go, as your lifespan goes on, and you continue in this entertainment industry. So while you are hot, make good of your coin right now. That's all he was saying. He said that shit looks stupid. I've always said that shit looks stupid, but I respect people's right to do what they want to do. However, if I was in a position like Jay-Z, being who he is, I would feel like it's my job also to pass on the knowledge that I learned so that we can start up some generational wealth and just not just his family, but maybe some of you others who are making a lot of money right now and y'all are wasting this money, uh, giving it to the scrippers and, you know, just flossing for an unnecessary reason. One thing about a true rich person, you probably not never know they rich. I told y'all I've been around motherfucking millionaires and didn't know until they were gone that they were millionaires because they what's understood don't have to be explained. They're not trying to prove nothing. And many black people get a, a extra time. If you think black people don't be flossing, look how they act at income tax season. You can't beat them flossing. They go get all these big ass TVs, these damn near lemon cars, and pull right on up to the front fucking projects. Something is wrong with that to me. And in two or three months, you see them toting that same TV out that house, taking it down to the pole shop. He was just trying to say, let's go of the let let's let go of the nigger mentality. Let's start being wise in how we spend our coins. I don't think he meant to offend anybody, little boosie. That's what Louisiana niggas do. No, that ain't what Louisiana niggas do, cause my son doing damn good. And uh 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 now he ain't rich, you know, he he still he working, but you know, it ain't like nah baby, he don't live here. But I'm just saying, he that is not what you do. Now, if that's what you do, then you do you. He wasn't disrespecting y'all. He just was trying to kick some knowledge that maybe because we don't have fathers in the home the way we used to, that maybe somebody ain't get the memo. That's all he was saying. I don't know why people got so damn mad about what he was saying, but they say a hit dog will holler. Mm. It, it, that was, I just mentioned a few of them that said something. It was more, baby. It was more. Because, I'm going to tell you something. He was trying to offer y'all some OG solid advice. If you listen, good. If you don't, okay. But at the end of the day, baby, him, Beyonce, Blue, and the twins going to be all right. Will you in five years? Mm. I don't understand that. Black people get so goddamn stupid sometimes. They get mad over the simplest things. Child, they say uh, Amber Rose is in a relationship with 21 Savage. I don't know 21 Savage from 22 Savage, and I don't know none of their damn music, whatever. But I see her posting pics all over social media with him, and she's supposed they supposed to be deeply in love and then um, introduced each other to, you know, their families or whatever, child, whatever. Now, 2 chains Trap House. Might be staying, y'all. Y'all know he was only supposed to have it for a short period of time. But from what I'm... And I know the businesses and the community around that don't want that don't want that big pink-ass house with trap house written in spray paint across the front of it. But see, 2 chains will start doing some stuff that good for the community, like HIV testing, amongst other things. And uh, they saying that there's a possibility that trap house going to be there for a minute. It ain't going to leave in a couple of months like as 